Hi and welcome to part three of Let's Play Bastion. Um, so, I, this in this episode I don't actually do any proper levels. I do some, a couple of challenges, and um, so we start with the Breaker's Bow challenge, which um, fair enough. I think I had to cut off fifteen minutes of this video because of cock ups. It is quite tricky. I remember spending quite a lot of time doing this one when I had to play through it myself, just because it's always one that just doesn't burst. Mm. It's so like. It's so unforgiving. This was my first try um, on this playthrough. I, I've, I had done it before. My so are there some cock-ups in this still, just to sort of like... I, well, I thought I'd show you me, show me like winning every prize, because there's three, there's, I'll have a challenge, there's three prizes. So the first one is normally, um, I think that there's every, I think every time there's a upgrade item, no, there's two upgrade items, mm -hmm. that's it. So I think there's something stringy and possibly something heavy on this one. Yeah. And then the last, the, the first prize is always a special move. Oh, okay. So, uh, how many do you have to do it in? So, uh, you did it in 10, so you got second prize there. Yeah, I think 15 is third, 10 is second, and 5 is first. Ooh, so you need to do it in 5. Mm -hmm. Do we have this in this video? Yeah, it's, it's the next run. Um, so, this is presumably after like 15 minutes of heartbreak. <laughs> Heartbreak implies sort of I was just a bit upset, where it was just pure anger, basically. Pure rage. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you, Ben, because you've come far from your days of rage quitting at this first sign of failure. But look at that, you just own it. That's a masterclass in the Breaker's Ball right there. I was pretty pleased with it. I'm very impressed. Thanks, Jack. Like, you make it look very easy. Ah, oh, cheers, Jack. So, um, do you want to go and have some sex now? What? Oh. Are we... St okay. Are we recording? Yeah. So back to the LP, um, so that was that, basically, um, I think using the pattern I used there is probably the best strategy, um, the get, the, get the timing down, yeah. The four diagonals and then the one at the front. Oh, yeah, stop. like if you do them in sets of three, rather, yeah, I mean you can get four in one shot, but uh, I wasn't doing it very reliably, so. So did you have to do much upgrading to get that to work with the damage and everything, or did you just do it with the basics, or did you have to upgrade it a little bit? Um, I honestly can't remember, I think I'd had, I can't remember what we did in the last couple of videos. I think I put one upgrade on it, which was possibly a, just a small damage upgrade. No, I think it might have even been speed upgrade, so I don't think it made any difference. Have you done any upgrading off screen? No, no. Okay. This is all. Everything I do is on screen, apart from like. Failures that fail. don't contribute anything. Yeah. Okay. So this is me attempting to do the Fang Repeater Challenge. Uh, I think I'm going to get second on this. Um, no place better than But I, th again, this is one where I suppose it's technically possible to do without upgrades, but. I just don't. You just don't seem to have time. Like, I it, remember this challenge. Yeah, basically you have to. It's sort of a run and gun challenge. But um, this is me forgetting what I have to shoot and then realizing halfway through. Um, but you can get upgrades to how quickly you reload and how much ammo you can have in the gun, which massively makes it easier. Basically. Yeah, I mean, why? Why? I mean, you know, like, there's no like point in showboating. Like, if you can upgrade it later and come back. The game's perfectly fine for you to do that, and there's nothing you'll lose. Yeah. And the game even says, like, upgrade stuff to make the challenges easier for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of, like, times when it will just give you hints. Like, um, there's one challenge I do in the next video, and the narration says, oh, sometimes they'd upgrade their weapons to do it better and stuff. Yeah. Like, in sort of... You have to get all of them to get first, don't you? Uh, I think so, yeah. And... I can very close to does the off, so. does the challenge just end if you fall off? Is that how it works? Um, yeah, you, yeah. But if any targets you've destroyed count. still count, but you don't get to get any more. No, makes sense. So we've got uh, something nasty, which I believe is an upgrade for the Fang Repeater, and something greasy, which we don't um, see yet. I realise I cock up this time and didn't edit it out. Um, so you just get to see me do that again, basically. Sorry. So now we can uh, talk about things more broadly about time shooters as a whole. Okay. I've I've had a, an idea. Okay, Jack. I'm gonna try it out uh, once I get my stuff sorted out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one of those doodle polls. Do you know what I'm talking about? A doodle poll. Well, basically, there's a website which allows you to sort of like send an email around or whatever and invite people to express their preference on something. Now a lot of they do it in the office at work. Um, say we we book in for the Christmas meal, and we wanted to sort of like vote on which was the most popular time to actually have it. Because that was the only fair way people could think of. Yeah. And then this doodle poll allowed us to sort of uh, unhonestly vote for uh, a short list of five dates and times. So I'm thinking I'll just 
shortlist maybe five Xbox 360 games I okay. think I could do and see what people like the best. Sure. I mean, I've not decided what the shortlist is yet, but I'm thinking one of them would be like the 40 wave survival burn of Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, yeah. Could do that. Um, if you were willing to wait until next month, I could do, I don't know, maybe the first... I could do a fractional LP of Skyrim, see what people think. Oh, that blind. I've pre-ordered that, so that would be an interesting one for people Definitely. to see. Um, and I'll, I'll pick three more. I might do Orcs Must Die. I've heard that's pretty popular. not played it yet, but I could do a blind one of that. So, yeah, I'll send out a, I'll send out a doodle poll once I've uh, figured out what my uh, ideas are. Fantastic. Anyway, you, did you just win now? Did you fail again? I, I just failed again. Are you upgrading now? Yeah, so I've put eight on the ammo capacity, which makes things, as I say, considerably easier. But mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to be re redoing it for a few videos yet. Okay. So where are we off to now? Um, I don't think. Uh, I think I just go back to the bastion actually. Oh yeah. Um, what time are we on? <coughs> yeah. Oh no, wait. No, I do do a level. It's the next one. I do. It's the core. You do a core level, do you? Yeah, I do. Um. Okay. Well, I I look forward to seeing that. Um. I mean, one thing. There's a couple of games I do want us to do like a live recording of. Like I think doing uh, Eternal Darkness would work well live because. Uh, it's a horror game. It's a horror game. So, horror game. You get the real reactions, things like that. Yeah. Whereas, if I just go, oh, something scary is about to happen, it's not scary. It's not even. Yeah, it's not as entertaining. Speaking of uh, horror see. games, <laughs> uh, I started playing Deadly Premonition again the other day. I, I saw. Got furious with it because I got stuck. Uh, it's this new type of enemy. Yeah. That you I mean, you were saying I've got over my rage quitting. I just haven't at all. I just completely just went, well, fuck it then, I'll play. <laughs> Screw you, Deadly Premonition. Well, Deadly Premonition doesn't do a, a great deal to appease its players. Like, it does so much to sort of, like, ruin the experience for you consciously. Yes. Like that whole uh, toilet gate thing. If you want to explain that to people. <laughs> Deadly Premonition is like sort of Twin Peaks the game, basically. So you have to, you're, you're an FBI agent who's been drawn into this... Uh, small village in uh, America to investigate this, these, this murder that's gone on because it's a very weird murder and um, about this, it's separated into chapters and the end of chapter 2 you discover uh, the second murder and at the end of every chapter you get a summary screen of how well you did and your statistics and stuff and there's always like a freeze frame in the background which sums up the chapter and for chapter 2 they just chose a freeze frame of someone throwing up in a toilet bowl <laughs> and that's I mean that just sums up Deadly Premonition perfectly you're, you're almost getting into it and taking it seriously and then you just get some nonsense like that yeah uh, so here we get a new weapon we get the scrap musket which is basically a shotgun really yeah it's got like that spread it's just a bit of a meaty blunderbuss type thing yeah uh, so as expected, it does more damage at close range. Uh, Good for these taking care of groups of these uh, squirt things. By yeah. the looks of it, it's not too bad actually. I like, I like, I think I use it more in this playthrough than I did on my own first playthrough. Um, so have you made a conscious effort whilst playing to try and include like different weapons? Because I personally, I have to admit, I stuck to like the same combo pretty much unless I needed to change. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to show everything off at least a couple of times. I mean, as I say, I don't use the bull shield very much. Although I do plan to do every challenge on, for, like, golding it, as it were. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that at some point. Yeah, you should see me using every weapon to reasonable degree. I mean, I do the musket challenge in the next video, but um, out of challenge, out of, out of challenge, out of interest. Like, have you done the bulkhead shield challenge yet? No, I mean you don't unlock it till quite late on. Even though have you ever done it? Or? No, I've never firsted it. Ah, uh, well... Uh, I've only tried a couple of times. To yeah, I, I realise that, like, during your first playthrough, you don't obsess over everything. No. But, like, I'd be interested to see, like, how your attempts at building it improve your understanding and appreciation of the bulkhead shield, because you didn't seem to uh, appreciate it in the last, uh, the first video, even. <laughs> no. Well, we'll um, see. We'll see I how your someone, hardships... Well, you, you linked it on Facebook and someone commented on there. Uh, how we left them on a cliffhanger, <laughs> yeah. whether, I, whether I will ever warm to the bulkhead shield. I think that is something worth sticking around for. <laughs> uh, I think that was just a distillery or an armory. There. I think that was Amanda who uh, made that comment, by the way, a friend of mine in uh, grad college. Lovely person. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the Call out there. Uh, well, I like to think that, um, well, I don't know, like, do you know how... Uh, 
we're part of the comedy society. Yes. And uh, you know, you obviously know uh, our, our president, and vice president, do a bailbag show called the Lock In. Yes. Well, I I often listen in to support them, and those because I quite enjoy the show. Mm. And then they off they, they very actively encourage people to message in and say things. And half the reason I keep listening yes, is just in case they mention my stuff. I can go. Okay. So I feel like if uh, I mean maybe I should do it more with Liam to be honest because I feel like he's. He's our most avid viewer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm going to make an effort to report in on uh, people who've made an effort to contact shit as HQ, shit as Towers. I agree. I think that's a good idea. I like to uh, appreciate our fan base. Because we do appreciate them. Well, I do. I do very much. Do you? Um, I was, I mean, we were just talking before we started recording this of how uh, popular the first Bastion video was. I mean, yeah, by our yeah. standards. By our standards, it was, it was like a... an instant 30,000 views, but... Um, no, people will go all over it. Yeah. So, um, we can only assume that is because of the format, that it's sort of like a more modern game. It's like a game people might not have played. It's fairly new. It's a pretty cool game anyway. Like, SNES sort of... Uh, reviews, although I think we do a pretty good job of them, they are 10 a penny. Yeah. So, we'll try and make a healthy mix of classic, modern, and everything else in between. I mean, I know when I watch LPs, I try and I want to watch games that. They have to be games that interest me, and either games I don't ever plan on playing particularly, uh -huh. or games I have played but not for a very, very long time. They're yeah. sort of the two types categories. Of, yeah. See, so, yeah, I personally like. One wouldn't watch something that I intended on playing. Especially, I mean, I don't know, maybe with open world games it's okay, but I'd wanted to have at least played like 30 hours worth of it first. Yeah, like I wouldn't want the story of some, like, you know, I wouldn't Fall watch. Fallout for a yeah, or Bioshock ruined for you. Yeah, I wouldn't watch an LP of uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution because I plan to play that. Yeah, same. But I feel like, um, I mean, another sort of candidate, um, if, if not Skyrim, I'd probably end up doing like. A bit of oblivion and starting, or even asking our audience what kind of character I should play as, because my smurgly burgly character is a pretty, pretty amazing thief character, more of an assassin these days. But hey ho, but I don't know. Um, I felt like, even personally, I felt like I missed out on this whole magical side of things because my magicka was never that high. Yeah, I I regret not putting some emphasis on magic for a lot of the game. I just played Total Meathead, and then I realised sort of how. That doesn't really get you that far in Oblivion, and magic is way, way, way more powerful. Yeah, and it's just more interesting, I think. Like, you can do all kinds of cool sort of, you know, I mean, the alchemy aside, like, you can enchant things, you can make your own spells. Yeah. It's more diversity, it makes the game just a lot more fun. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrook Fort. So, um, yeah. That takes care of Cinderbrook Fort. And you're probably noticing, sort of, I mean, the gameplay pattern's pretty well established now, basically. Ba basically, um, basically, you fight, you you know, you journey through an area, you're trying to work out where the core is, you grab the core, then there's normally a big battle at the end. Hightail out of there. Yeah, that's. Um, sometimes the areas collapse, Which sometimes they don't. Telling me about his own journey to the city. I don't think they really make it too predictable, though. No, I think, I think, like, it keeps you guessing, there's. I mean, they don't play with the gameplay formula that much, but they, no. they mix up the enemies and stuff. I mean, you've probably noticed my most little uh, smoking pipe there. There you mm. go. Um, which I show off in the next video. Basically, um, it's sort of like a wave survival kind of thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I don't know how many waves it was. Maybe it was 20, 40, 10. I can't remember, but it's sort of like an endurance challenge. Yeah, I mean, I'll, as I say, I'll show it off in the next video. Um, so I get to build another thing this time. I think I... What do I build? I build the Lost and Found, which uh, basically you can buy items from. So I think I buy a few things. Oh, okay. So I can buy uh, some finishing moves, which is what Final Warning, Graver Slash are. Some, all the some things are the upgrade items. So I buy the, uh, an upgrade item for the sword. And then the Bronze Spyglass is uh, Old World thing <laughs> and then these are all uh, like use passive tonics things. things yeah passive tonics so um the one i just bought there was the one that should carry five elixirs as opposed to three the breakers i like stab synth stab synth that's a name oh it's it, it makes me happy i'll see if you earn another one of these sort of like achievements but not really achievements. well i've earned uh, three actually i did the one for the musket the one for the sword oh, one yeah. for the bow um, so they'll give you bits of monies 
Yeah, so I've just uh, pretty much doubled Shards of the concept. old world. Yeah. I think, like, when you start struggling for, like, shards later on in the game, those become really useful. Yeah, you get some pretty hefty rewards for them, and a lot of them you just get just for playing through the game. It's not... you don't have to keep Like, enjoying all the sort of different things, like... Because there's one for, like, just making bits of the world rise up. Yeah. Which is just to walk around and play the game enough challenge, which will just come after a while. Pretty much. So, um, what I'm trying to get get to there with something sharp is the, as I mentioned earlier, it gets the ability to throw two swords as opposed to one, which makes the challenge doable. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. So, in the next video, I'm going to uh, get absolutely stoned on the smoking pipe and do uh, the musket challenge. We'll see you then.